I got this jacket at the Goodwill Bins. It's more of a shirt jacket. It's a little bit beat up. It's got some holes in it. Fraying, but that's just fine for an art jacket. And then the back has got some beautiful lines. Look at those. Those are just gorgeous. Now, of course, with art jackets, you don't have to follow the lines, but I like keeping the architecture of the, the garment. I like following these lines. You know, they're well thought out. Somebody designed this garment. I kind of want to honor that design, but it can just break all the rules. And then this, I'm going to put this on it within those beautiful lines there. And this, I got this off of a shirt and it's a really old shirt. You can tell it's all piled and stuff. But it's going to get a second life as the centerpiece of an art jacket. And I'm going to turn this into a do-it-yourself patch using heat and bond. And then I also have some trim that is very, very silvery that I think I'm going to add to the front a little bit. It's going to be a pretty simple design, I think. So I am ready to use my Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. I've got this laid face down. That's the shirt. And then I've got the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold laid down on top of that with the gluey side face down. I've got my hot iron and I'm just going to start. Once you let it cool down and cut it down to size, now you're ready to iron it on to your jacket. And it's no longer a flimsy piece of fabric. It's also, it's more controllable now. It's easier to deal with. I have cut it down to size. It's going to go in like this. And the edges, the top wasn't wide enough, so you can see that it's not going to follow the total frame, but that's okay. I'm thinking about adding maybe a couple of design elements, or maybe a really thick ribbon will cover that up. So I have my, my iron heating, and this is ready. I really like using this stuff, this heat and bond. What a great invention. Just make sure I've got it all lined up exactly the way I want it. That's looking good. And now I want to protect the fabric and protect the little jewels that are on it. So I'm going to lay that over it. And my iron is nice and hot. So here we go. Okay, it needs another round. And it's different with every fabric. It's different with every, you know, what you're using as far as fabric, what you're gluing onto it, and what your, oops, Jesus, yikes. <laughs> I got to talking and might have let that burn, holy cow. So what was I saying? So time-wise, as far as, as gluing it on, it really is just trial and error. It's different with every fabric. And we'll let that cool off a bit. 
Sparkle alert! Sparkle alert! Look at how beautiful that is. You gotta see it in the sunshine. Holy cow. It is blindingly beautiful. So, I got this, where else? On Amazon, where I get almost everything these days. It's really hard to find trim. I wish I could find trim at the, at the Goodwill bins or at the Goodwill outlets. I'm gonna lay this down here. I'm gonna follow the lines. I think that's gonna be really beautiful. I'm gonna put one there, put one there. Mainly just frame this in. That's my next plan. I'm going to be using E6000 Fabrifuse. And I am just going to spread some Fabrifuse. Actually, wait. Let's be a little bit more careful about this. So we don't get it all over the jacket. Whoa! What the heck? Wow! Let's see how uh, gloppy that came out? It usually doesn't do that. Not sure why it's doing that, but... I'm just going to run my finger all the way down this and get this whole thing nice and coated with that and, and then lay it in place. And I'm going to follow the, the seam. Put that under. Okay, so I made it long enough so that it folds down underneath the back of the jacket. And I'm going to cut it right up to that underside line there. And I'm going to stick a clothespin on it and let it dry. And just press that down. And then let that have a good dry while I do the other side. I have the top ready to go here, ready to lay that down. And what I did before that, I glued it under and I put a clip on both edges. And as soon as those dry for a little bit, then I will glue this in place. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try this one next. If you can't see what this is, liquid stitch. Let's see if this works any better. I'm hoping that it will. And this one comes out in a nice white paste, which I like. And I like doing this because if you just lay it down when it's like that in a big line, some of it will escape and get on your jacket. Okay, now we're going to let that all dry and see how both of those glues do. I feel like I'm black, I feel like I'm back doing my glue tests. I don't know if you guys have seen that video, but I tested out four different glues. I'll put a link in the description for that. The glue is dry on the back and everything seems to be holding pretty well. Oops, I need to put a little bit more glue in there. It looks like I missed a spot. Okay, 
Okay, this was just sort of an impromptu test for those two glues, and they're both holding really well. So I'm pretty pleased with both of them. Now, I found this material, which, well, I found this material ages ago. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm pretty sure I've showed you this before. Uh, this was from a curtain. You can still see the curtain part. Anyway, I've got, I've got a lot of this stuff. So I want to put these on the collar. And I've already cut out two pieces. Unfortunately, the fabric's not long enough for me to do one whole piece. And I am going to glue these in place on here. And I did a test last night. So these have been drying for about 12 hours. And the test was with these two. E6000 has stained a little bit, whereas the liquid stitch doesn't seem to be stained at all, but it's, they're so close it's hard to tell. But I am going to go ahead and use the liquid stitch to glue this on. So this is how they're going to look once they're laid down and in place. Isn't that beautiful? And how I'm going to apply this is I'm just going to make a line going across here. I really like fabric glue that looks like Elmer's glue. <laughs> And the reason I really like it is because I can see where I'm applying it. I can see. It's just so much easier to see. And then I'm just going to grab some of that and sort of mesh it around here in the middle. Just to help it all stay down in that center area as well. Okay, and we're just going to lay this on top. And this has, it, it, these are just raw edges. You know, I didn't create any kind of fold under cuff or hem for this. Because I like the idea of raw edges on art jackets. I like the idea of art jackets just being kind of bohemian and kind of wild and kind of devil may care <laughs> as far as how is the sewing aspect of it goes. And let me tell you, I grew up in the 1960s and 70s when girls had to take home ec and we had to learn how to sew and cook and clean and blah, blah, blah. And boys didn't. Although, you know, I think my brother had to take a home economic class. But whereas I had to make a full outfit, lined jacket with lined pants, my brother, the boys class, had to make a pillowcase. <laughs> I don't know if times have changed, but I got off track. What I was saying is back then I had to, uh, to sew anything. We, we used patterns. We used measuring tape. We, oh my God, there were so many rules, the never ending rules. I don't get me wrong. I love sewing. I absolutely love sewing and I'm good at it. But this stuff, doing it this way, this way is so much more fun. It's like, uh, just throw the rules out the window and have fun creating something unique and one of a kind and artistic and something that screams your personality. Or if you're going to buy one of these jackets, which I should tell you, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but my art jackets will be available for sale in my shop. 
I am not ready yet to release that information, but just to let you know that that my jackets will be available for sale. Everything that I create on this channel will be available for sale, with the exception of the unicorn hat. I did that for a friend. So that is not my property. Anyway, there. I've got that down and I'm going to let that dry. Put some right in here in the middle. And we'll see how that looks. If that looks kind of weird, then I'll cover that up with a little bit of trim or something. Okay, and then I'm going to let that dry. I also did the cuffs the exact same way that I did the collar. And then I just put them in place or held them in place with the clips. And I think that this did stain a little bit some of the parts look a little bit, a little bit stained. I don't know if this is dry yet. But, you know, it doesn't look bad. So I am not gonna, yeah, it, it, it did stain. This side looks pretty good, but over here, it's kind of strange looking. But oh well, it is an art jacket and boho style. I don't know if anybody will be able to tell. So I'm happy with it. So I am almost done with this jacket. I have decided I'm going to put this fabric on the pockets. So this is what I've got cut out. And that little notch there is for the, the button. I'm just going to go right around the button. So I'm just going to glue everything into place. And that's similar to what I did with these. These I just cut a little hole in them big enough to put over the button and then glued that in place. And with this one I just cut a little slit there and then made sure I put a bunch of glue around there so that it had adheres completely to that buttonhole. dry. And ta-da! Isn't she beautiful? And this was so easy to make. So the glue and heat and bond and an old shirt, some trim, and you have yourself a beautiful, creative, gorgeous looking art jacket. And now for the final reveal. So thanks for stopping by. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I post videos every Wednesday at 5 p.m. and every Sundays at 9 a.m. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.